Whether you're looking for a Chevy car, truck, or SUV, go see my friends at Apple Chevy in Tinley Park. With over 500 new and used vehicles in stock, they have what you're looking for, and at the lowest price possible. Go to AppleChevy.com. Makes women appear more attractive and makes a person virtually invulnerable to criticism. Alcohol is a way of life. Alcohol is my way of life, and I aim to keep it. Find it, buy it, make it. I don't care. Just get me some booze and fast. I can't take this much longer. I gotta have a beer. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, sir. Ah, brutal week. One of the greatest weeks in Chicago sports history, for sure. And actually, well, I think one of the greatest weeks in Chicago history, because two million people came downtown and only three people passed out. <laughs> I think that's a pretty good. That's pretty good, right there. Do you know the problem, though, Ro? I was going to meet a friend of mine down here, and he said it'll be easy to spot me. I'm wearing. I'm going to be wearing a Jonathan Taves sweater. <laughs> so you, number nineteen, just look for that in the crowd. What could possibly yeah. go wrong? Uh, Richard Roper is in the studio with us today, as he is on every Friday. He's uh, here for Roper Reviews on the Canard Wagon. For some reason, Rob Martier steps in. He sits in the back, doesn't say anything, and just, just <laughs> he just waved at us, and he just waits for the Canarble drink to be served. It's the damnedest thing. Judy's uh, rushing down here from the seventh floor <laughs> newsroom position. Connor, everybody comes running. And this, and today, I mean, uh, they should always come in every Friday, but today especially, because one of the great joints in Chicago history, and if I can call it that, and I think that is that Absolutely, is a, a term yeah. of great endearment, Gene and Giorgetti's is here, and uh, Tony Drapetti, who has been the uh, proprietor there for uh, well, probably longer than you would like to acknowledge, isn't that right, right. Tony? <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, uh, is, uh, the, uh, is, is with us, and now this is amazing. What, what year did Gene and Giorgetti's open? In 1941. 1941. Nice. And uh, on the uh, just in the uh, River North area, I guess they would call it now. But uh, they used to call it near North Side back uh, right. back right. in the back in the day. And then, and it, 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 where the fire uh, where the fire went through is really what, that building is from the 1870s, right? 1871. That was built oh. with the wood that was salvaged from the Chicago fire. Wow. So there's only one building older than that downtown, and that's the Green Door Tavern it's on Orlean Street. It's about six months older than we are. But. Now, what I want to Richard mentioned something about this, because when you walk into Gene and Giorgetti's, first of all, that bar, uh, no matter whether it's lunch or afternoon or dinner or whatever, or late, that bar is always packed, mostly with my colleagues who are refusing to go to work. You've <laughs> noticed right. there's a lot yeah. of people. It's like the whole Mad Men bar. I'm meeting a source at Gene and Giorgetti's. Yeah. Like, I'll be there for two, two and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a, it's, and, it's, and you get cocktails at Gene and Giorgetti's like you would get. In the 1940s and 1950s, that's the feeling you get when you walk in there. Yep. And Richard mentioned the fact that you've got this color red in the banquettes and in the chairs there that you just don't find anymore yep. anywhere. Gorgeous. Are those original to the? They're not. They're not original, but they're duplicates of what was original. Everything so, has so. been restored. Yeah. Basically, for us, it's about maintenance, about mm-hmm. maintaining that really rich ox yeah. blood color, which is now quite ox trendy. Blood, yeah. Actually, it's not. It's yeah, that's trendy. true. But yeah. you know, I was I was telling that's Ro Michelle, earlier. By the way, Tony Hi, Michelle. Yeah. I was I was telling Ro earlier. It's it's one of the key places if you have someone who comes to Chicago and says, "I want to get an authentic Chicago experience." It's a it's a great place to bring someone who's not. I mean, obviously you have tons of locals and regulars, but it's great introducing the place to. to Thank new you for saying that. We yeah. we pride ourselves on compliments like that. We love to hear it. Being considered a hallmark of Absolutely. Chicago oh, is something sure. we take very serious, oh, yeah. and, and we're very grateful for. We love that. And if you want to stake the size of a Shoe. That yeah. is where you're going. Yeah. Right, right there. Yes. It is. I've never seen. I mean, and Chicago's got great steakhouses. I mean, there's no question about that. But if you want to go it, 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 to overwhelm somebody with something old school, <laughs> right? With the uh, those those uh, cottage fries, mm. and this, I mentioned this earlier. There is nothing like a salad that's just it, lettuce, maybe a few tomatoes, dripping in uh, in vinaigrette that's been chilled. Mm. 
The, I think the greatest thing about Chicago right now is that the restaurant community is very much like a mosaic. There are multiple pieces that make up this great whole. Mm. And I think the role that we play sort of as the grandfather of all steakhouses is yeah. that we keep it simple. Yes. And our mantra is always go big or go home. So everything we do is big and bold and simple. And I think that's... You know, there so are some true. great Couldn't be better. Yeah. I don't get Simple the, is great. Get the <laughs> chicken parm the size of your head. A little yeah. bowl of pasta on yeah. the side. You're just, uh, you know, yeah. just, it's, it's your version of coleslaw, loading. basically. Yeah. <laughs> I tell people all the time, if you're looking for that feeling like, uh, you know, for like the front page, because a lot of people in the uh, media business hang out in there. You got politicians. You never know at that bar who you're going to walk into. Right. You know, there's other steakhouses that got, got big action bars like that, but it's a very select group of people who frequent the place like every day mm. there's, every, a group, there's a group we call the mahogany club they're at the bar every single day and they sit in the back i have done this too uh and you know before and after church services don't don't get me wrong uh that uh right around the corner there's about a uh i don't know like 18 inches 24 inches of clearance in mm-hmm. the corner of the bar mm. when you walk and again this is a building that they 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 put that bar in, in 1941, and they haven't changed. People were smaller in 1941, I think. <laughs> and you and and I sometimes see like eight people crammed in this space that oh, yeah. really two yeah. Americans can right fit by in. The big Lucille Ball poster for when she did her opening at the restaurant for Mame. That wow. was signed, it's signed in her lipstick. That poster that stands there. Oh, oh that's one what of, a, yeah. it, the place is just dripping with history. It's, and, and that church you mentioned, which is the Assumption. Both yes. my parents were baptized there. Oh, both my, my grandparents, both sets of my grandparents were married there. I mean, my family is very steeped in that history. That's the great, restaurant yeah. itself, but my family as well is really steeped in that history. Yeah. So. Actually, cool. I was, I was born I was born about 100 feet west of the restaurant in an old wooden two-flat way back when and never knew anybody at Jane and Georgetti's and wound up marrying Jean's daughter. Well, tell them about your first job. <laughs> yeah, for, tell them about your first job. When I, was, when I was younger, you know, I was we were, we were kind of looking for things to do, and I was kind of an entrepreneur, and I used to go down and open the door for people to make tips. And this guy at Jean and Georgetti. Jean and Georgetti. And a guy with a white apron and a tie would swear at me in Italian and tell me to get out and the whole deal, right? So we moved away seven years later. I grew up. I go into the Army. While I'm in, while I'm in the Army, my brother buys a house across the street from Gina and I to make a lot of Gina Giorgetti's. So I see this girl in front of our house. I waved at her and asked her out. And, and it turned out know. to be Jean's daughter. <laughs> so that was and it. now you're in the restaurant business. Now I'm in the restaurant business. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, here you go. And uh, what year was that? Well, we got married in 1969, but I was in the radio advertising business my whole career. Until, I'm sorry about until that. My fa- <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Jeez. Right. Until my But then you, then you went straight. You it cleaned up yeah. into yeah. a respectable my profession. When he, when he got sick in 1989, he asked me to go in and, and step in to look around. I said, Pa, what am I going to look for? I don't, even, I, I don't know anything about the restaurant business. And it's a good thing for all of those loyal employees that we've had there forever. I learned the business from them, so I stepped nice. in and... Ran both businesses for seven years and then sold my radio advertising business in 1996. Couldn't be. So uh, it just it, it it just couldn't be a better place. It's one of those places I like to take people who've never been to Chicago. Mm-hmm. They come mm-hmm. in and everybody wants to. You know, if you want to try a couple of steakhouses, it's great. But if you've got time to just jump in and try something that is, like we said, steeped in history, and it's just you you go to it and it's like you know, and the people in there. You see people. And you know, there's people, there's guys of, of a, you know, a generation been, must have been going to that place for 60 years. They get dressed up mm-hmm. and they sit there. It's like, or they're ghosts. Yeah. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're really alive. A little, little bit of both. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's great. And you do have the guys in the white aprons and the, and right. the tie still. Mm-hmm. And everybody knows, you know, I, 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 my favorite thing is, don't worry, I make a special for you. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> it doesn't right. matter which table you're at. It's the exact, no, don't worry, I make special for you. So <laughs> it is, uh, it is the best. All right. Uh, we're going to find out what cocktails we're drinking here okay. in just a moment. Has everybody been served or overserved yet? I've noticed and the entire staff uh, is down here. This is the biggest turnout we've had at Canard Blanket since we started it <laughs> since that first week. Uh, we'll come back, and uh, Gene and Giorgetti's is the proprietor. Top 5-5 five five is coming our way. Roper Reviews and an exclusive interview with Stan Bowman about the past, the present, and the future of the Chicago Blackhawks all coming your way right here on 720 WGN. Gene and Giorgetti's is in the studio with us, and the great Tony Derpetti, the proprietor there for the last number of decades, is here. Mm-hmm. And listen to this. After, what, it's uh, 75 years, essentially, in business, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, uh, Tony is also joined by his, his daughter here, Michelle, um, uh, you guys are opening up a new restaurant. We are. It's about time. You know, we don't we don't like to rush things. We yeah, like apparently to really not. Take our time. We're really we have no sense of urgency in, in our decision making process. 
All right. And this is going to be in Rosemont. Correct. Right. And there's an event space associated with that as well. Yes, there is. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, when, do you, when are you guys opening? So we have a series of opening events that start uh, June 28th and will go through July 22nd. The restaurant itself will be open to the public July 22nd. Uh, and same, oh, same stuff? It's the same. Yeah. The restaurant is very much inspired by the downtown location. I mean, the big difference is... You know, the original location my grandfather opened in 1941. We've never opened a Gene and Giorgetti. All we've done is maintain a Gene and Giorgetti. So it's very in the same vein. They definitely look related. But it's a 2015. It's a little more contemporary. Same food, though? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what you want. 100%. You just want that steak the size of a shoe that somehow the, is tender. That's actually on our menu. The <laughs> steak's the size of a shoe. It's right on there. Fantastic. It should be. Yeah, it's on there. Shaquille O'Neal's shoe. It's all on the menu. Air conditioner for comfort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for your comfort. It's well, priority. that was a big selling point yeah. in the 1940s, I would imagine. Yeah. 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 You were the movie theaters and you were the only thing that's air conditioned yeah. in this town. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And uh, Reve is with us, and she is uh, she's making all of your uh, your cocktails. Yes. In the uh, at, uh, for this in the uh, the new place, and uh, she's got her own mixology company, Femme de Coupe. Yes. So there you go for that. Now, uh, what? It, now I need you to get on a microphone over here. Okay. All right. What are you? Uh, what are you doing for us here? Okay. So um, we started off with a twist on a Negroni, which is a traditional Italian cocktail. So it's mm-hmm. got a little bit of scotch instead of gin, mm-hmm. and then Campari and uh, vermouth. Mm-hmm. And what times of fighting begin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you there. And then we're gonna. Um, move into um, a sorbet cocktail. So it's not something you see very often, but I'm shaking it with a lemon sorbet, wow. a little bit of gin, some lavender honey, and then some mint in there. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And then we're going to finish off with an old-fashioned with a coffee twist. All right. We're wow. going to get all the recipes for this and put them up on the WGNRadio.com right there for people who are interested in, in doing this. You can make this at home or you can come to join. Gene, do they do this at Gene and Giorgetti's downtown? They can make these drinks? Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I, I want to go to one of those bartenders. I'm trying Not to think yet. of the guy's name and, and go, uh, you know what I'd like? I, I want that uh, that uh, twist on the Negroni. Yeah. And watch him try to pull me across the bar by my tie. Yeah, I ain't seen him in a long time. He ain't around here no more, Negroni. I don't know him. Oh, That's my favorite part of Gene and Giorgetti's too is you go, hey, have you seen the, uh, no, no, no. No one ever no, it's, it, there's, it, there's, it, it, for a place that is packed constantly no one's ever been in no, he's not there yeah it's the it is it is just the best well anonymity is key it is yeah. it is yes. because i mean there's a lot of business like in there and that's why the walls don't talk right yes oh no <laughs> no it is a great it is i'm telling you right now it is as fun an experience i mean you got to come hungry and prepared in the modern era not to eat for the next uh i don't know six weeks or so after you've been there but it's something do, great do you have a favorite dish when you come in oh yeah well, I like the the uh, the chicken. Okay. I like your uh, the, the the sort of your take on it with the chicken and the sausage and all the Joe's. With chicken Al Joe. Mm-hmm. Chicken Al Joe. Yep. I love that. Okay. And what happens is I, I end up going with a bunch of guys, and they go, "All right, get the chicken Al Joe for the for the table, <laughs> and then we're going to take you know two of the steaks, slice them real thin." Uh, and right. the steaks, I'm going to just tell you this right now. You've never seen anything like If you've not been to Gene and Giorgetti's, I don't care what steakhouse you go to, just your average steak. And I want to know, do they always serve it that size, Tony? 20 to, 20 to 22 ounces. 20 to 22 ounces. Yes. And what would, like in, 19, in the 1940s, do you have any idea what that would have cost? You know what? We, we actually did a show, uh, 19, uh, the 70th anniversary. We brought the prices back to 1941. Oh, my goodness. Talk about the bath you took. We donated all the proceeds. We had a set menu. We donated all the proceeds. The steak was $1.75 in 1941. Wow. Oh, but I'll bet you for a dollar they were like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Why? I'm not going to pay those prices. Right. Right. Hey, right. Joe DiMaggio, I ain't got that kind of scratch. <laughs> it's all relative. It's, it's all relative. It's pretty great. So, yeah. yeah. And it was a dollar seventy five when we when we yeah. opened. You got two two drinks, you got the appetizer, you got a salad, you got a choice of an entree, you got dessert. Yeah, you're talking about at the seventy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that was all that was for the, the nineteen forty one prices. And everything the all the appetizers the same? Well, you know, no. the menus yes. evolved a little bit here and while there's a really wide variety and selection on the menu, it's definitely evolved over the years. There are some things that are no longer popular. Is that Chicken Alla Joe from back then? No, no. Chicken Alla Joe was probably from the 70s, yeah. right, Dad? Well, but one of our waiters created it. Yeah. Because yeah. he got Oddly the chicken. His name was uh, Fred, but they just went with <laughs> Chicken Alla Joe. Well, because, again, his anonymity. Name was Joe. Yeah. His name was Joe. <laughs> yeah. So you got the chicken and the peppers and the potatoes and all that right. sort of coming together right there. Um, I'm just getting hungry thinking about this right now. <laughs> that is just unbelievable.